Hello all, I am Dr. Mohit Shah and I am going to demonstrate ultrasound of the shoulder joint. When you assess the shoulder, the patient has to be facing you. Make sure that the elbow is flexed at 90 degrees with the palm facing upwards. The elbow and the entire extremity has to be loose so that you can passively move the limb if need arises. We begin from the anterior aspect by keeping our probe in a transverse fashion over the bicipital groove. And as you can see in this video, you have the lesser tuberosity and the greater tuberosity and in between you have the bicipital groove with the biceps tendon within it. Now if you see as I move my probe from superior to the inferior aspect, the biceps tendon is changes its echogenicity. At times it appears hypoechoic and this is because of anisotrophy. So if you assess the biceps tendon as it goes in the intraarticular pressure, that's when the tendon becomes more oblique. You will see a cuff surrounding the tendon. The superior aspect of the cuff is formed by the coracohumeral ligament and the inferior medial aspect is formed by the superior glenohumeral ligament. This is the cuff of the biceps tendon. The next thing that you would like to evaluate is the subscapularis tendon. As you can see in this video and with the patient's position, we keep our probe on the lesser tuberosity and you externally rotate the forearm keeping the elbow abutting the torso. So it is only an external rotation of the forearm that will get the subscapularis out of the scapular and the bony ribcage so that you can visualize the entire subscapularis in its long axis with its insertion and footprint on the lesser tuberosity. The subscapularis can also be imaged in a short axis by moving the probe longitudinally and you can appreciate the multi-penate appearance of the subscapular tendon in the short axis view. For the supraspinatus, which forms the bulk of the referrals, you need to keep the hand in a modified classes method. As seen in the video, your hand should be in the back pocket with the elbow as parallel to the torso as possible. And you assess the long axis of the supraspinatus and keep your probe longitudinal onto the greater tuberosity and you will get the footprint of the supraspinatus. You assess the supraspinatus in its length and breadth and as you can see, as you move from the anterior aspect to the posterior aspect, the shape of the greater tuberosity changes. Anteriorly, it appears more protuberant and as you move out posteriorly it becomes flatter and flatter. So anterior fibers are of supraspinatus, posterior fibers constitute the infraspinatus. So when the greater tuberosity becomes more flatter you are probably at the level of the infraspinatus. The same has to be assessed also in a transverse view and you can see the nice depiction of all the six layers that you need to see and they are namely the skin and subcutaneous tissues, the deltoid muscle, the subdeltoid bursa, the supraspinatus tendon, the hypoechoic hyaline cartilage and the humeral cortex. So you got to appreciate all the six layers in each and every patient in a transverse view. And as you move more medially in the transverse view, you will appreciate the rotator cuff interval where you see biceps tendons end on and this is a site which most of the arthroscopists use to enter the shoulder joint and your supraspinatus tears have to be measured in relation to the rotator cuff interval. So assessment of rotator cuff interval is best when you do a modified class method. If you do a classical class method, you'll probably not appreciate the rotator cuff interval as there will be too much of internal rotation. As you can see in this video, you can also look for the anterior impingement that is that happens under the coracoid. So as you see with external and internal rotation of the forearm, the subscapularis glides beneath the coracoid. So this gliding movement has to be appreciated 
in a dynamic maneuver.